Yo, everybody, this is Jordan Comstock, and you're watching The Best Practices Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching the Best Practices Show, where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the world. And if you're a private care dentist, you're trying to grow your patient base and grow your practice, you're already hearing about this. It's how to create an in-house membership program for patients. And everybody's got questions, and I got the man who's going to answer the questions directly. So today we're going to talk about the secret recipe about how to create a successful dental membership program with Jordan Comstock from Boom Cloud. You do not want to miss this. And I'm just going to say this out loud. This is a non-negotiable. Don't even think about it. Don't even question it. Don't even digest it a little bit. If you're growing a dental practice, you got to create one of these. And everybody that's doing it is seeing the direct impact on how they're growing private patients. So do not miss this. Now, a couple show notes. We're shooting this live on Facebook. So if you have questions, just shoot them at us. Like send them to us, put them in the feed on the right. I'll ask Jordan while he's on the show live and we'll get the answers from the master himself. Or if you're watching these later on, continue to add questions to the feed and you'll see. We'll get we'll do our best to give you the answers you need because we want you guys to get the most out of these best practices shows. Also, share these with your team. You know, I get a lot of feedback that, hey, look, the dentist is getting all this education, but the team isn't. So share them with your team. It's a great way to say, hey, look, learn more about this and let's do it together and we'll talk about it next week in the team meeting. Uh, keep sending us suggestions for shows too. Guys, we are up over 39,000 followers on Facebook without really even spending a dime to do it. I don't even know how this is working. And then we are also uh, at over 150,000 of you on iTunes. And I don't have anything to say other than thank you. So this is a lot of fun and keep sharing with your friends. Now, my guest today, um, when this whole thing, you know, Jordan, this is nothing new, but really yeah. there's, a, there's a whole big wave of this going on in dentistry. And I share this every time that you're on because I get a chance to speak everywhere. The lecture season starts next week. I always mention an in-house benefit membership program for patients. And then I ask nice. people, who's got one? And then there's always five to 10 hands go up. It's not the majority of the room, but every time I do this, there's an extra hand up, an extra hand yeah. up, an extra hand. So it's really taking shape here in dentistry. And I always like to talk about, well, there's two things. Number one, I want you to share with our listeners who you are and what you do, because I want them to know that you're the expert here and why. And then secondly, I want you to mention why this topic is so important. Yeah, absolutely. So Kirk, again, thanks for having me on the show, man. My I pleasure, was a blast man. on your show. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, my name is Jordan Comstock. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I own uh, Boom Cloud, which is a software company that allows practices to create membership programs. Uh, and I, st I started in the industry uh, on the dental lab side of things. So uh, I understood how to do the, some of the clinical side of things and manage the dental lab and, and learned how to manage business uh, that way. And and uh, I found the need uh, through a few of our clients at the dental lab uh, that they, they were starting to create membership programs but didn't really have the right tools to help them scale and grow the program. So one day I sat down and I designed the whole thing. So um, that's kind of how I got uh, thrown into what I'm doing today. I absolutely love what we do here at Boom Cloud and, and love helping uh, all the, the practices uh, with us. But um, that's a little bit about me. I've, I've been in the industry for about 15 years now. I can't believe it's been that long <laughs> and uh, I'm loving every minute of it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. awesome, buddy. And you do such a great job of helping our listeners and even our clients get this all set up and get it rolling. But let's talk about why this is so important because this yeah. is a super hot topic. It's one of my favorite yeah. ones. Why is having one of these in your dental practice so important? Well, I think there, there's a couple reasons why, right? Uh, a lot of practices uh, are burdened with, with dental insurance, right? They're partnered with PPOs. Uh, which force you to discount your prices. Uh, you don't have control over those discounts, which force you to lose profit margins. Um, I, I think that's the biggest 
issue why or the reason why you'd want to start a in-house membership program uh, because there's there's another way there's another way to build your practice there's another way to attract and retain patients other than the PPO route right um, and then what I just said there a, a tool to help you retain your patients uh, every practice every business deals with some sort of attrition um, no matter what industry you're in. Um, and you need a way to help retain and keep those patients loyal, right? Um, so I, I believe that an in-house membership program can do that. It's a great tool for that, uh, for generating recurring revenue for the practice, which is a revenue stream that is pretty uncommon in, in this industry, uh, to have a predictable recurring revenue stream. Uh, it's one of the most important revenue streams a, a business can have uh, in 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 forms of increasing valuation and, and the val you know the value of your practice, um, and then it's a tool to help increase case acceptance, right? Mm -hmm. um, that the, the, the practice controls um, and um, can offer to the the patients. So those are the reasons why I think it's important for a practice to set up a membership program and and to enroll their patients to it. Yeah, and I could actually piggyback on that and add a thousand. We could do a whole show on just the benefits oh, totally. of creating one. Totally. I mean, it's yeah. first of all, it's hard to find a business now that doesn't have a membership. If you go to Costco, you go to oh, Netflix, yeah. um, even one that all of you use called Amazon, Bezos knows one thing. We need more members. He's not looking at yeah. revenue. The more members I can create and the different tiers of membership, the more we're loyal, all that kind of stuff. Now, also think about this. If you're a dentist watching this right now, you're creating an – it's not an insurance program. It's an in-house member, which we're going to talk about that. But you're creating a plan in which these patients can only come to one dentist. Who is it? Yeah. It's you. Yeah, it's you. They can't, they can't <laughs> use these benefits in another office. The other thing to keep in mind too is insurance benefits are not going to finally reconcile themselves. You know, the big insurance companies aren't going to have a, 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 an awakening one day and say, you know what, we feel really bad. Like we've been ripping these dentists off. Let's <laughs> let's start issuing checks and let's just give them let's full cover. Let's make it easy for let's them. Let's make yeah. it easy. That's <laughs> never going to happen. No, and. Yeah. Yeah. And on top of it, you know, there's no maximum, there's no, and you need a way to be able to retain these patients. Also your patients need to, your team members need a way to present what you do in a way that they're energized. And I'm going to tell you right away, they're going to, they're going to experience violent resistance starting it. But once they get going, they're going to go, that is the easiest thing we have ever done. So yeah. I'm and and a, sorry, Kirk, no, go right <laughs> and, ahead. And, a, and a side note, uh, the uh, more of the United States are, are becoming less dependent on insurance, right? There's more and more people that don't have dental insurance, right? It's, it's now estimated around 60% of Americans do not have dental insurance. And, and to me, that's a, a good sign for practices wanting to create and grow in-house membership programs. Right. And, I, and again, I'm just going to keep pig, piggybacking on the benefits, but <laughs> this is a really sta sad statistic. But of those people that have dental insurance, the number one reason patients still go to the dentist, this is terrible, is yeah. they perceive they have a benefit. So a benefit. now you can provide a benefit. It's not an insurance benefit, but you now have a way to provide that so that you can keep that traffic consistent in your practice. So chew totally. on that for a second while we talk about the secret recipe, but kind of get us teed up, Jordan. When we talk about a secret recipe, here's why this topic is so good for today. Because people are like, oh yeah, I tried that, but it didn't really work. But really what you have to have is you got to have a strategy. You got to have like, it's got to be a consistent thing. You can't just try it once and go, oh, it didn't kind of work for us, right? No, no. So uh, in in my opinion, there's, there's three things that a practice needs to be successful, right? Uh, they need a commitment strategy, a marketing strategy and and a, a team presentation strategy, right? Where where they can and I'll, I'll, we'll go into details here, but um, that's what I've seen working with the, so many practices that they need that and and too many practices, like you said, Kirk, will start something new, whether it's a membership program or anything else, um, and then they they give up too easily or or don't have a commitment strategy. And uh, in my mind, when when I start something new here at Boom Cloud, or or if it's out, out of work, if I'm maybe learning a song on the guitar, right? I wanna I want to commit to learning that song and and give my full attention to it, right? Um, so 
I believe having a, some sort of commitment strategy where you have a goal and, and you want to achieve a, a certain amount of members or a certain amount of revenue or, or reduce a certain amount of PPOs, you got to have some type of goal and you got to you got to give 100% commitment to, to that strategy. Um, far too many practices will start it and will do it passively and nothing works uh, when it starts out being passive, right? Uh, no matter what you do, you need to give some effort to to the strategy, right? Um, for example, I mean, I can apply this to so many things. I'm I'm sure you can too, Kirk. Uh, when I started Boom Cloud, I I gave I gave it a hundred percent commitment, right? Even though in the early days we it was not proven, there was no revenue coming in the door, right? It was really hard and it was very challenging to commit, but I did, right? I committed. I quit my job at the dental lab and I, I gave it everything. Right. And it worked. Right. And, and I think every, every business, every practice owner goes through those types of things. Um, when they start something new, they need to, they need to, you know, get commitment, get a, give some like hundred percent commitment. Right? right. Uh, whether that's, whether that's maybe dropping some PPOs and then throwing in the membership program and starting to just out of necessity, growing that membership program. I think necessity is a good tool to use, uh, for commitment. Right. Um, so that's, that's my opinion and what I've seen out there. A lot of, a lot of practices don't commit right. and, and kind of just put it to the side and say, yeah, we got the brochures over there right. about the program, but Yeah. Yeah, here, let me piggyback on this too, because here's yeah. another example of a good commitment strategy is just laying out a plan for the next period of time that you want to measure how we're going to uh, improve this. Here, you know, uh, in an instant gratification world, a lot of times yeah. dentists do something and they're like, well, how did we do in the last couple of weeks in this thing? Here's a great example 13 weeks every Friday, you report on how many membership programs were presented and accepted by patients. That way, a month is too short because it's too easy to give up. But over 13 weeks, you'll go, wow, we presented 50 and 40 said yes. Okay, let's wow. do another yeah. 13 weeks and see if we can't do present 60 and have 50 because this is not a short-term strategy. No, this is not. something that you've got to be committed to a long term. And the other thing is the team needs to see some benefits. The data over 13 weeks allows them to be able to say, wow, that wasn't a ton, but wow, it's better than last quarter type of a thing. And yeah. now we're start to layering confidence. We're starting to layer confidence that our commitment strategy is working. No, I, I love that. And I love the the 13 weeks you said where, yeah. where you measure. I, I think that's fantastic. Um, you got to measure, right? You got to measure what you're doing so you know you can, number one, hold people accountable, right? The people that are in charge of your membership program. As a practice owner, you need to measure so you can hold those people accountable and know what's actually going on in your practice. And then and then number two, it's always it's always good to know you know, what's happening in the numbers, right? So then you can say, okay, this is working. Let's continue what we're doing. If it's not working, let's pivot or change um, th what we're doing and see if that works better, right? So that's, right. that's. I'm a big believer in committing into something. If, if again, I'm going to go back to the music concept because I love playing the guitar, Kirk. Um, if I, I learned to play the guitar when I was 11 years old. Mm -hmm. That's when I started, right? Uh, when I, I picked that guitar up and I committed 100%, every day I went and I did something, right? Even if it was something little each day, I committed to it each day. And eventually I got to the point where I can play, you know, guitar solos and, and cool riffs on the guitar, right? And make up some songs. So this, the same thing goes to committing to an in-house membership program. Do something little every day. Uh, to to improve your program, whether it's talking to a, an additional patient that day and then right. doubling it the next day, um, but I, I I feel like that is a, a a huge thing that that practices miss when they when they start membership programs, uh, because I think they're so used to PPOs and the PPOs doing all the work with with like lead gen right right and patient right. generation right so i think um if you truly want to reduce ppos and and create a successful membership program you got to commit you got to do something every day right and I, I i just couldn't agree more with that to a couple other nuances to the whole commitment strategy now for those of you that you know like me i'm short on math 13 weeks you might be thinking 13 <laughs> weeks well 52 weeks in a year divided by four quarters that's exactly 13 weeks. It's something <laughs> as simple as writing on a yellow post-it note every Friday and go, doc, this is how many we got this week. Yeah. This guy. We now, another thing we've learned the hard way about something like this in a commitment strategy and measuring metrics is 
you can't have everybody own this one person. If everybody owns it, nobody owns it. So somebody in your office has got to be the membership pioneer, the owner, so that you say, hey, look, you're owning. And you could probably have two people. Own, one might own the implementation. Another one might own the numbers. But there's got to be someone owning those two. Agree, Jordan? I agree 100%. And in, in fact, uh, make sure it's somebody that is there every day in the practice too. Because yes. I, was, I was talking to a practice the other day and they're like, we have somebody that comes two days a month, and they're going to oversee all the membership program. I'm like, your program is going to fail. Right. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. It's mm-hmm. going to fail because you're not giving it enough commitment in the early days. Maybe once it gets bigger and a little bit more mature, you can do that. But in the early days, you got to give it 100% commitment. Yeah, so that's an example of a commitment strategy. A commitment strategy would also include education, also yeah. include something, a review at a team meeting, say, hey, look, how are we doing? I would say a commitment yep. strategy would also include a mini discussion during the morning huddle, saying, hey, look, guys, right. keep in mind, our goal this week is to get four patients, you know, to present to four and have three say yes, because yeah. real and really this is in their best interest. So so that's important on commitment. And now let's go, do you have anything else about commitment? Because I again, we can make the whole show on that one. Yeah, I, yeah, no, I think that's that's enough for now. If people have questions about how to com- how to truly commit to something, you, they can ask me or ask you. But um, yeah, I think that's I think that's a really good end to our commitment strategy. Cool. Well, let's go into marketing strategy, which is the second piece of the recipe to making this successful. Yeah. So marketing is is one of my favorite things, and it's what every business needs to do, right? But not every buzz- business has it as a priority in the, in, in the practice. Right. Right. Um, so I think, um, and, and from what I've seen out there, the, the practices that are successful and have hundreds or even a couple thousand patients signed up for their membership program have a consistent, successful marketing strategy, right? What, what does that mean for you? I don't know. A marketing I'll say up front here is an experiment, especially with this. You have to experiment, see what works, test out. And then once you figure out what works, you just double down on it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I can give you some tips here. What market is uh, towards the end here. We'll talk about some marketing, what I, what I've seen successful. But, um, in my opinion, if, if you look at your PPOs that you're, you're managing the practice and, and take a look at the, all the write-offs you're taking, think of that as a marketing expense, right? Uh, when you look at all your write-offs and and think of it as like a marketing expense, you'll see that you're getting ripped off with the PPOs, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. right? You're spending right. a lot of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars in write off write-offs each year um, to to have those PPOs give you leads, patient leads, right? right. Um, or patients, um, and you can market far more efficient, especially this day and age. Um, for for a fraction of the cost that you're you're spending, you're writing off with the PPOs. So I want everyone to keep that in mind because PPOs are very expensive uh, to your practice when you could when you can market on Facebook, right? There's there's all sorts of Facebook ads. I mean, Kirk, you're proof there. You, what you've grown your Facebook to? You said you said at the beginning like thirty nine, forty thousand uh, followers. Almost forty. Yeah. And, and you said you didn't have to like pay anything for that. So there, there's strategies that are, are completely free that a practice can do. There's also paid ones. I recommend doing both. But um, there's there's Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads. Uh, there's direct mail marketing. I know that's a little old school, but it works, especially if you can target it, right? Right. Um, now, if, if, if I were a practice doing direct mail marketing, I would probably find all the 55 and up uh, neighborhoods in my, in my community. And I would, I would send them a a direct mail piece saying, Hey, if you don't have dental insurance, it's okay. We, we don't accept it. We have a membership program or whatever your, the name of your program is and market to them. Right. Um, no matter what you do with marketing, targeting uh, a certain demographic is, is essential, right? Right. So I think having having those 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 demographics in order uh, will help you be successful with, with like direct mail marketing. What Absolutely. Well, yeah, I have so many thoughts on this. I, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> That's you, it. No, you're the expert. I'm just like, okay, you know, and, and I'm going to piggyback again on that. But if you're going to market anything, number one, you got to have something written somewhere that tells people what you're up to. Because if it isn't writing, if it isn't in writing, then it doesn't exist. And a simple way to do it is just put it on your web page with what you just said, Jordan. Look. 
no insurance, no problem. We've got you covered type of a thing. Our in-house membership benefits program, and then you list all the benefits to it. So I think at the very least, you got to have it on your webpage. Number two is you got to have something written yeah. to explain it to your patients. You just can't talk Absolutely. to because their eyes roll back in their head and say, look, have okay. we told you about our in-house? Be-? And it's got to be written. You present it to every patient every time, every day. You're going to find it's going to grow no matter what. I don't care if you're selling flowers. If you're selling flowers on a piece of paper, you mission every patient every day, every team all the time, you're going to sell a lot of flowers just yeah, by the fact <laughs> you just purely mentioned it. Now, the other thing, I, I'm glad you mentioned the mailing, but also too, and a great marketing strategy is how do we get friends of patients involved saying, Hey, look, refer one Good of girls. your patients, you know, and we'll waive one of your family members or something like yeah. that. Because now Absolutely. you're going to get a whole family because you're going to have one member of the family and then good chance you're going to add everybody else in the family, which means you're going to be able to retain those patients. So also make sure it includes a, hey, look, we have, you know, if you have some great friends, refer them. Now, one more. Oh, my gosh. We could do a whole one on market. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> this is the advanced court. Jordan, you know this happens. When you yeah. start talking about in-house membership benefits programs, patients are going to come to you and go, wow, that's like cheaper than my own dental insurance benefits. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For. Well, the natural question after that is who do you work for? Yeah. And then you go, well, I work at the plant at so-and-so write the plant uh, name write down. down and then have somebody, probably you on your Friday that you have day off, go over to the HR department and go, Hey, look, I can shave hundreds of thousands of dollars on your dental insurance programs. Are you interested? Start with that question. You'll get an appointment with anybody. The CEO will probably sit down with you for a half an hour and go, okay. And you can say, hey, look, I created my own in-house membership benefits program. You can present this to all your employees. Send them to me. We have dentists that are, they're like, oh my gosh, this is the easiest thing. Now, is every employer going to say yes? No. No. But there's going to be a few that are going to go, oh my gosh, you just added so much to our budget because now we don't have to do that. So Yeah, and and and. That's one of my favorite strategies. Um, it's it's a little harder than most because it does take some personal time and and it's more face to face in my opinion. If you're gonna if you're gonna market to other businesses, but I think it's probably one of the most powerful strategies to really grow your membership program because you can do what a strategy called leverage sales. Right, you can sell to one man and get hundreds or or ten or however big the company is. Right, you can sell to one person and get mo- many. Right. So I think that's a, a wonderful strategy. And I, I think it, it should be done more in in uh, when a practice has a membership program, because so many small business owners out there either don't have don't offer dental benefits to their uh, their um, their employees or they think it's too high and worthless. Right. right. So, yeah, I highly recommend that strategy. I think I'm a big fan of, of going and, and going to small businesses. For, for right. These. And try this with your marketing experiment. When you have, yeah. when you're a dentist and you have friends over at your house, just ask people, why don't you go to the dentist? Just tell me the truth. And they might say, well, I don't come to you because you're expensive. They'll go, no, we don't <laughs> go to the dentist for one reason. We don't have insurance. Yeah. And you can go, oh my gosh. You can look at that and get angry or you can go, oh my gosh, what an incredible opportunity. Now you can start using that because a lot of times you just need to know the why before you get into the how and make this work. Totally. But, yeah. yeah. And the other thing I would say about marketing, uh, Jordan, you and I both know this. One of the most important components of any marketing is that you're consistent, you know, because people yeah. people confuse marketing with a return right away. One of the biggest things is you're just always consistent. So whatever you employ, make it work all the time. I, I agree 100 uh, percent. You got to be consistent. Um, if if not, then it's just it's it's going to have a, a a sporadic message, which is not good. You want people to remember what you're doing, and I think consistency is is the key, right? So, yeah. um, I, I think I, that's. A- I, I'm going to volunteer you for this too. So I'm just going to tell you, if I was a dentist, oh. I would employ. I'd have a call with Jordan or one one of his team members every month as part of the consistency to keep this thing hot in my practice. Do you know what I mean? That would be a scheduled marketing if, activity. Yeah. If if. Uh, well, and if yeah, any of our users, I, I have I have my calendar online. Anyone anyone could uh, schedule with me and pick my brain about any type of strategy. Um, I think that's always good too to have some type of accountability coach, right? Um, when you're when you're whether it's marketing accountability or commitment or or anything, right? What you're right. doing with, with this. So having right. some type of accountability coach or partners is is can be beneficial. 
Right. Because at the end of the 13 weeks, I'm going to say, Jordan, we got 40. How do we get to 60? And you're going to give me the answer. Yeah. At least you a know? suggestion, right? <laughs> or a suggestion. Yeah. Cool. Now let's, let's go into the, the third part of the recipe, which is the presentation strategy. Tell us about what that is. Well, I think far too many practices lack verbal skills. I'll be honest, <laughs> right? Uh, and and what? lack. What? What are you talking about? You talking about? <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, I think that's probably a really it's a really good asset or skill to to enhance in in a practice. And I think it would be wise for a a practice to invest in that. Whether it's the dentist um, enhancing their speaking skills or their presentation skills. Or having helping his his team members do the same, um, but uh, when you have a membership program, you're going to be doing a lot of educating um, to the to the patients, and and the the team needs to know how to um, successfully present a membership program in a way the patient feels like it's a really good benefit for them, right? Because you can easily butch the presentation, and and the patient just is like, nah, no thanks, I don't want it, right? Right. Um, so I think I think really focusing on presentation skills and and educating the the, the patient. So one, let I, if it were me, I I would go out to my local community and speak to. If I were a dentist, right? If I would go out and speak to um, local businesses, I would I would go to I would do what our my good friend Dr. Christopher Phelps does. He goes and speaks at retirement homes, mm -hmm. right? Or not retirement homes, but the HOAs for the 55 and up communities, which I think is a fabulous idea. Wait, pause right go there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now explain why. Like the why is more important. Okay. The, the why is more important because number one, it builds credibility and trust, and that's mm -hmm. a, a huge thing you need to do when you're when you're selling membership plans or implants or whatever. Whatever, it's credibility is is huge. You you come off as the expert, right? Um, and it's it's non salesy, right? When you right. speak and educate, it's non salesy. It's it's content, right? Uh, Kirk, you and I were talking this morning, and you said it's all about content. Well, the same thing applies to a dental office when they're trying to uh, trying to grow their in-house membership program. You got to create you got to create forms of education, right? Whether it's live events um, that you invite people to, or you create a video about you explaining what your membership program is, or you write an article on your own blog, or or a blog in your local community, or the or or get featured on the news and say this is what our practice does, um, and get featured in your local news, right? Uh, as right. A PR, right? I think that yeah, the the why is because it builds trust and credibility, right? And then also the HOAs, uh, fifty five and older. Another thing that people don't understand in marketing is sometimes when you get a marketing expert, they're going to do a uh, an income analysis of people that are generating income in your area, and people that are north of fifty five and sixty five, they're not on that because they're not generating any income but they're uh, yeah but they're good sitting point. on income do you know yep. what i mean like yeah good point so, and they also don't go to the dentist because they're 65 or 66 and they don't work anymore so they don't have dental insurance but they're sitting on a mountain of income because they've saved their whole life what a problem with teeth yeah what a they, get older <laughs> oh my gosh and also keep in mind these people are going to be living to 100 and there's nothing north of 65 other than food and communication do you know what i mean so like they got to go to a dentist. You create an opportunity. That's an incredible segment that gets missed in marketing because people are like, well, those people don't generate an income. Well, they're sitting on income. So uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. Something to think about. Now, keep going yeah. with the uh, presentation strategy. And I want you to go back to this. Uh, can you guys see why I'm excited about this? <laughs> when you present this, it isn't just a piece of paper and here is it $30 a month, blah, blah, blah. You got to present it in a way that it's truly a benefit for the patient. And I've watched some great dentists go, you know, Mrs. Jones, this tooth is broken and I'm going to fix it today. But really for the most part, I mean, you don't even have to pay today if you sign up for our membership program or Boom. something, something like that. People are like, wait a minute, or I can, I, you know, I, we can create a simple little plan and be $30 a month and I'll take care of this tooth. See how you're presenting it for a patient that they don't have to pay today, but now we're going to keep them as a patient for a long term. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I, I think that, that, re, that, that's a, about the topic of like, the principle of contrast, right. right? If you've read the book Influence, um, I, I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite books. Uh, I believe Doctor Doctor Phelps talks about it. A lot of people talk about it. It's a great, book. fantastic book that teaches you about psychology and influence and how to positively influence somebody. Right? You don't want to neg 
do it negatively. Uh, but yes, it's you're using the principle of contrast when you when you can use that skill in, in presentation. Um, it's going to make it seem like a sweet deal for the patient, which it is, right? Mm-hmm. You're not lying to them. Um, but if if like you said, if I were to come in and I and I wasn't on, let's say you're the the doctor, Kirk, and I come in, I need a crown or two, right? And um, I don't have dental insurance. And you say, Jordan, this is what it would cost if you pay cash today. It costs 2000 bucks, let's say. But if you sign up for our membership program today, Jordan, you're going to get all these benefits. You're going to get cleanings. You're going get, to get, get exams. You're going to get all your x-rays done that you need anyways, right? Uh, plus, we're going to discount even today's work um, if you sign up at 20% or whatever your discount is, right? 10%, 20%. That's going to look like a better offer to me because I'm going to get a discount right away versus if I straight up paid cash, right? There's no incentive for me to just go the 100% cash route. Um, discounts can be used to your advantage. And, and using the principle of contrast, when you show a higher price next to a slightly lower price, people are going to look at the lower price and they're going to choose that one, right? Absolutely. Um, it's just human nature. So developing presentation skills to really effectively um, – present that type of uh, influencing style to your patients, in my opinion, is going to really help your membership grow. Absolutely. And two things I would say, as I've watched so many people do this really well, I don't like the word discount. I like the word save. Mr. Jones. Save is better. Yeah. Don't say I'm going to give you a discount. Just say Mrs. Jones or Mr. Jones. I can save save you so much money today. Yeah. You just want to go to our membership program. Now, let me speak to the analytical dentist who might be watching this going, well, my crowns are $1,300. No, let's face it. Sometimes patients come in for an emergency and it's just a little broken cusp or something where it might not require an entire crown. They're just in a little pain or discomfort. You can just let them go for today. Or if they sign up for the membership program, there's no charge for today. And that's a great way to return because we want to look at this in a long-term game. You're talking about not only the the first year value in having a patient, but the lifetime value, building a relationship with a patient. You're going to keep these people for 10, 11, 12 years. And then also, so too, if you're a dentist that's later in their stage of the game, you're going to do what's called retire pretty soon, which means you're probably going to sell your practice to a younger dentist who's going to want to know how many of these patients are real and not dead. Absolutely. Absolutely which means a membership program is going to drive that number way up. You're going to go, dude, not only are these real patients, but they're not even on insurance. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> And they're these, paying you monthly or yearly. They're paying you oh, monthly. baby. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. So I, I, again, like I just, I love this concept. It's not new. Every business is doing it. So um, it's time that dentists adapt. It's actually one of the oldest business models in the world. Yeah, it is. having subscriptions and things like that. It's one of the oldest. But yeah, I, I agree with you um, in increasing the value of a practice. If a, if a dentist um, can grow his in-house membership program to a good amount of patients each month, uh, like you said, it is going to benefit the, the next buyer. It's going to make it more attractive to them. And that's what you want to do. When it's more attractive, they're going to pay more price for it. It's going to be more valuable to that that new coming dentist. And honestly, uh, I been in the industry for over 15 years or almost 15 years. And, um, I remember some of my friends coming out of dental school and they would go buy a practice and then the patients would just move because they would just move away to another office because they were used to the old dentist. Right. Right. And when a patient is committed or semi invested through the membership program, they're more likely to stay and continue getting work done at, at that office. Even right. with the change of dentist. Yeah. And if I'm a young dentist just coming out of dental school and I got a wife and kids, I don't want to buy a practice that's 100% PPO, all <laughs> no. that kind of stuff. Uh, but I'll buy a practice that half of it is an in-house membership benefit pro. Oh man, game on yeah. because that's recurring guaranteed income for years and years and years to come. So yep, it's a wonderful opportunity. Everybody wins. It's not just the dentist. The patient wins long-term. They get better care. Um, gosh, I, I just love it. So, Jordan, any last thoughts that you have as far as the secret recipe goes here? Yeah, I got a few tips to help motivate motivate uh, your team to talk about the program, right? Some things that I've been seeing out there in the industry are our practices will create like a one-time setup fee or enrollment fee to their membership program, right? It could be $20. It could be $50. I've seen all the way up to $100. That's up to the practice. But what they do is then they they'll they'll give a bonus to the team member that 
that is motivated enough to get that patient to sign up, right? Um, I, I've seen it happen with all staff, all team members, right? It doesn't have to be just the front office. But I think that is an excellent way to help motivate uh, your your team because it is a win for the practice. It is a win for the dentist. It is a win for a patient. If we can make that win for the, the team members, they're going to be all over that, Absolutely. right? So uh, we do similar things here at Boom Cloud, and it works really, really well. So um, I would recommend um, – doing some sort of, of, of benefit for your team members to encourage them to enroll patients. So give them a $20 gift card or, or, or whatever it is, but use it with the enrollment fee of your membership program. Use a portion of that to pay for, their, for, for a little benefit, and, and people will be all over that. So that's, that's one of my tips, I think, that could help a lot of practices grow a, a membership program successfully. Yeah. And one of the other tips I'll say is that I've done a couple of these with Jordan is just watch the previous interviews we've had with him. Cause every time you're on here, you give us great, great stuff. And I actually <laughs> sent this, I actually had a, a great dentist that I, I was texting you and I just said, just watch the podcast because in that yeah. you'll see how it's going to work. For you. And he was a specialist. He's like, Oh my gosh, this would totally work. Yeah. So, you know, when you, when I you talk, I called him, yeah, you did. And, you did, and he was so <laughs> yeah. happy. But the thing is, is that in any recipe, you want to just keep making the recipe better. And part of it is you keeping your mindset that this is a long-term strategy that benefits everybody that's involved. And it's easy. I, I mean, there's nothing very better than easy, you know? Yeah, it's very easy. And 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 honestly, I think any practice can do it if, if they just do what we talked about today. Commit. Uh, do a marketing strategy and and increase your 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 verbal skills, your presentation skills with this. And I think uh, it's going to be an awesome thing for for the practices that do that. Yeah, another awesome thing though too is Jordan. You wrote a great ebook. I actually downloaded a copy, read it. And I'm not joking, guys. You'll read it and you'll go, "This is really because there are some ebooks you read and you're like, okay, this is just fluff for the yeah, product. You, that's, the, that's your true. ebook. I'm just going to say it's very well written. It's incredibly valuable to a dentist. Just tell us about what they're going to read on that if they download download that book. Yeah, so I, I walk through my philosophy. You kind of get to know me as well as you read it and and kind of how I came about to to create Boom Cloud and and help practices with this. So that's the first part. But then you also re we we I educate on the benefits of recurring revenue. We we educate on like reducing PPOs and and then we also educate on other ideas and concepts that you could use in the practice in regards to in-house membership program. Uh, and you're right, I. I, I don't, it's not just a quick ebook, like a five pager. It's about 40 pages. I'm actually constantly trying to add new stuff to it as I'm learning more. Um, as cause, cause I see practices do this at, every day. This is what I do, right? Yeah. I see exactly what's working, what's not working. My team and I, we, we talk about this pretty much on a daily basis on what's working, what's not working for practices. Um, so I continue trying to, to, to update the, the ebook, uh, because I believe in, in giving a, a lot of value, um, uh, you know, in the ebook form, uh, because that's how I like to, I like, I'm a, I'm a reader. I'm kind of old school. Um, well, you are definitely a, a giver of value, buddy. You do a great job bringing value. And, um, again, I'll, I have so many benefits, but let me just end with this. So you guys know if you're a young fee for service, private care dentist, you're looking for an advantage with DSOs, and changing like this is one of your silver bullets. You yeah. you can't ignore it. If you're ignoring it, you're just not listening to how to grow your practice. This is a great way to differentiate yourself long term. And I'm telling you, even the DSOs are going to be doing this. So you're going to have to be on the front end of this. Oh, yeah. They're they're actually doing it. They you are just have to do it better. That's so. how that's how I got introduced. A DSO that we were working with at the dental lab was doing it. So yeah. hop on it, guys. Hop on it, guys. <laughs> get get there fast. So. Jordan, I'm just always so grateful having you on. Um, keep in mind, people are listening to us on iTunes. If they want to find out more information about you, how can I find out more information about you or what, what you do? Yeah, everybody, uh, you can go to boomcloudapps.com. Um, and that's app, apps .com. Um, And then uh, we have all sorts of resources on our website that are free. Uh, we got webinars. Uh, we have uh, my ebook. We have other videos and, and tutorials and tips and articles, um, mainly articles about my thoughts and, and things uh, in regards to membership program. But um, yeah, go to our website, boomcloudapps.com. Uh, you can also download our ebook. Just go to boom, uh, boomcloudapps.com forward slash book, and you can go direct 
if you don't go direct, there's a pop-up too that comes up. So you're not going to miss it. <laughs> awesome, buddy. Yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. Well, stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. But guys, I oh. hope you enjoyed today. If you did, just do us a favor, hit the share button, share this with your friends, send that word out to the rest of the people in the dental community. Keep sending us suggestions that you want to see for shows. I'm going to have Jordan back. Send us some of your challenges. I'll get Jordan back on here and yeah. we'll unpackage some of the big problems. I would love that. Or little problems that you encounter when trying to implement this, and we'll get the answers straight from the expert. Keep sending us suggestions on other shows you guys want to see. We're lining them up, doing the best we can. And uh, until we see you next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. 